If you're living with diabetes, you know that the condition can lead to a number of other problems. One of these is called diabetic retinopathy, an eye disease that, if left untreated, can damage your vision and potentially lead to blindness. The problem is, is in the United States, 50% of the diabetics who have diabetic retinopathy are unaware that they have it and don't go for regular routine eye exams. It's that 50% that represents multiple millions of patients who are at risk for blindness that we need to reach. The good news is that if you do go in for an eye exam, your doctor can use a very powerful tool to find out if you do have diabetic retinopathy. It's called Optical Coherence Tomography, or OCT, and it allows doctors to see deep into the structure of our eyes. In diabetic retinopathy, tiny blood vessels leak unwanted fluid into the back of our eye. This causes swelling that's called macular edema, and it's this swelling that can ruin our vision. Before the invention of OCT, eye doctors could see this macular edema, but it was an inexact science. If you have a qualitative way of assessing a disease, in other words, a doctor looks in and says, yes, there's macular edema present. The patient comes back three months later. The doctor needs to try to remember, well, how much macular edema was actually present three months ago? Was it more than what I'm seeing today? Was it less than what I'm seeing today? OCT testing took all the guesswork out of that. We had an exact number that we could compare to the previous test to know whether the disease was actually getting better or worse. In the early 2000s, this ability to better diagnose diabetic retinopathy was followed by a better way to treat the disease. Researchers discovered that a protein in our bodies, commonly called VEGF, played a major role in the disease. And it turns out that many of the diseases that cause vision loss in the back of the eye are caused by the presence of too much VEGF. And that causes the blood vessels in the macula and in the retina to leak. With this knowledge in hand, scientists were able to develop anti-VEGF drugs that when injected into the eye would keep this from happening. So here we had a convergence of an imaging technique that could show us where the fluid was located. We had drugs that could block the cause of the fluid accumulating in the back of the eye. And that revolutionized the way we took care of patients. Part of this revolutionary change was the fact that doctors could administer the anti-VEGF drugs in a very patient-friendly way. The convenience factor cannot be overstated. We can use OCT imaging to determine if a patient needs an injection and then make an educated decision as to whether the patient gets an injection at that visit or it gets the injection and then we can extend the interval so they don't have to come in every single month. But when patients do go in for these checkups, they'll find that OCT offers another important advantage. Diabetes is a disease that is heavily dependent on patient involvement. From monitoring blood levels to self-administering injections, diabetics are used to exercising some level of control over their condition. The vivid images that OCT produces offer patients the chance to continue on that path. OCT enables us for the first time to really sit down together with the patient and look on the disease. In every single examining room, I have a 60-inch TV. And this 60-inch TV is connected to the, all of the instruments. So uh, at that way, I can not, can not only explain why, but I can also show. In the education process that, that, that then can be done with a patient and their family in real time to show them what their disease consists of and when the treatment has worked or hasn't worked has really been very helpful. And so it is that the true measure of OCT is not how impressive the technology might be, but how much it helps people a fact not lost on researchers, even as they look to push the limits of that technology still further. I think of my mom and I think of my family, my brothers and so on, and that, that drives me into improve the technology to help people.